So anyway, this is we can hear echo. Echo. Which we can... That's great, though. Oh yeah. Potential, uh, potential What's room that? mic, if ever I heard one. If you keep the. Yeah. Uh... Hello. <laughs> I mean, that's a good. Very two nice. Good two seconds. I'm with Carl Tatz. How are you? Warren, always a pleasure. Fantastic. This is one of your Phantom Focus mix rooms. It is. And actually the first time I've had the pleasure of being in one specifically. I'm thrilled to have you. So, I'm going to kind of throw the ball back to you. Tell us about this room because obviously it's not just the speakers and the seating position, but it's the whole design of the room that I'd like to know about. Right. Well, it's, it's designed from the monitors out. That's how I designed uh, what makes me a little bit different than other people, other designers, is that <clears throat> the most important thing is the monitors. And so the whole thing is to support the monitors because uh, there's nothing more important in the room. That's, that's the most important thing in a control room is the monitors. Otherwise, why bother? <clears throat> um, so let me just give you a little run. I'll tell you about the room physically, and then we'll get into the Phantom Focus uh, system and monitors. So, um, you know, these rooms are calculated. You know, we have certain limit. We had certain limitations in this room because we have a staircase on the other side of this. So normally this would be all glass with uh, columns, but uh, I made it work. And then on this side, if you can see this is all, you know, room within a room with uh, laminated glass. Uh, so you, you really don't hear much. But I can show you this. This is what I call the acoustic lens. And this is uh, part of the Carl Tatt signature series that Orlex builds for me. So right. you can listen to my voice. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Those are all tuned. Right. <clears throat> okay. Absorption on the front, right. reflection on the back. Um, the back, we got lucky in this room. Uh, it was a gift. Normally, I build a, an axle mode absorber. It's about 13 inches thick, and yep. it grabs from 20 hertz up. So you get yep. 20, 40, 80, 160, et cetera. <clears throat> and it works really well. But in this room, the, ro uh, the roof line continued on down, so there's a huge cavity back there, which I couldn't really take advantage of, you know, as far as uh, space in the room. So we've got this huge cavity, so it's a very deep base trap, so that was a gift. Uh, so you can sit on the couch. There's always a little buildup, but not much in this room. Right. Um, then in the front corners is what we call the, the subwoofer corners. Yep. These, these are base, tra base traps also, and this is all part of you know the signature series that we that are custom made for the room. And the bottom are the subwoofers on each side. Two subwoofers. You always use two subwoofers because of the modes in the room. You have uh, length modes, width modes, and height modes. But with width mode, everyone is has to be in the middle, so it's the worst place you can be. With link modes, you have the chance of moving in between the nulls, but right. you don't have a choice in the width. So if you take two subwoofers and you put them in the corner, we face them to the wall, two inches away from the wall, the driver itself, um, the, the subwoofers actually become out of phase with one another at the first and third axle null, which is where you have this deep null here. Yeah. So they become out of phase, so that dip you have automatically comes up like this, no EQ by itself. Right. That's why we always use two. My rooms lean on the dead side because anything that's going to come back to you is going to cause comb filtering. So I'm not a big diffusion guy, although this is diffuse. It's diffusive and absorptive, you know. So I believe that on the side it gives it some life, you know, a more natural. But, you know, the back wall, the ceiling is dead. Why would you want something to come back to you, you know? Right, absolutely. Um, and, and there's other people who disagree with me, but there's a lot, <clears throat> I'm a lot right. A lot of <laughs> There's a lot of studios in Nashville, I've, I've been noticing reads, et cetera, that have huge screens, and I love the idea. I, yeah. I keep thinking to myself about getting a screen behind my monitors. Well, we'll talk about that. What do you think? Does you think it affects it? Oh, absolutely. It's a, it's a huge thing. And, and so when, <clears throat> when, someone, uh, when I begin speaking with someone, uh, you know, the, the first thing I want is I want dimensions, I want photos of what they're doing. And, you know, half of the time they'll have, you know, really pretty, you know, Apple Mac monitor, whatever, yep. in there, and it makes a huge difference for imaging. Um, and I've had a few examples where, and I understand people have to do what they have to do, they have to work, but this yep. is what I encourage, just get, get a wall mount, put it b behind there, or I've even had guys, you know, that obviously this is a full tilt um, design here, but if I just go into someone else's studio, yep. 
you know, even if they just get a table or something to put it behind there, that, that's fine. You just got to get, you don't want anything here. Even this console comes up higher than I would like. That's why I have the, uh, I have the signature, uh, the Carl Tatz edition um, Argosy console, right. which has the slants and there's, it's just wide open here. So you have this really nice um, space where it'll allow you to image. So, so having a console like this took uh, quite a bit of elbow grease. Uh, to make it work because of the reflections, but yeah, you don't want anything in between ever and, and that includes speakers Yeah um, So I've had examples where somebody would do that and I would actually get behind the console and take the monitor and bring it down and they go You know the difference is huge. You, you'll you'll experience it yourself. Okay. Well, let's talk about the phantom focus system You know the phantom focus system what you're seeing here. This is almost the top of the line There's one of the speaker above this but the phantom focus system will work with anybody's monitors in, in any room um, there are just a, a, a bunch of criteria that have to be strictly um, uh, adhered to, and then I can bat a thousand, as I said before, I can always deliver what you just heard, uh, as long as certain things are met. And it doesn't have to be such an exotic, you know, this is a full tilt room. Uh, you can do it with, with the right panels and the right strategic places and still have this, because it's all about this, you know. And this isn't anything I invented. It's a, you can only tune for one spot. If you move your head to the left or right, the frequency response is going to change. It's physics. You know, it's, I have nothing to do with it. Um, so that, that's the main thing. In a room like this where you have a chance to do proper trapping and that kind of thing, then it's pretty smooth throughout this room. Um, but in the bedroom, you might not have that luxury. But based on what I do, I can, I can guarantee the God seat here. You know, and that's what that's what it's about. So the way the procedure goes, someone calls me up and they're interested in the phantom focus system. Let's just say, obviously, if they call me up and they want to want me to design the whole studio, then obviously that's a big deal and takes months. But um, if it's a phantom focus system, the actual on site happens in two days. But there's a lot of preparation. I need to know, you know, they send me photographs, as many photographs as possible, and then and dimensions, and then I will make suggestions. I'll calculate, you know, where the seat should be. Um, and a lot of times you're limited because the room might do, be too small, but it's, I still know how to make it work. <clears throat> so once we have the idea that, okay, the room is right, I might make a suggestion, you know, you need to put a panel here or whatever, you know, get the first reflections. Um, then we come in and we do it, but there's, not, there's none of that, well, let's try this when we get there, it's, it's done. We don't have time for that, so it's, it's pretty intense. The first day is what I call the rhythm section, uh, and that's when we do the physical setup uh, of the, um, the monitors, and it's critical. In other words, if, if you don't have, if the rhythm section isn't happen, happening and you don't have that pocket, you know, you're polishing a turd. So <laughs> this, is, this is something that no auto tuner is gonna do for you, and no box is gonna, uh, give you this you know this is extremely well thought out and again it's just very rigid as far as certain things have to happen uh, along with you know what the the engineer needs I, I can't tell him how to work so it's, it's a back and forth until we till i get what i want so i can give him what he wants um, so it takes about a day uh, we use four lasers for height the most important one thing is we'll get you know just because you know you measure you know 40 inches off the floor on this side, 40 inches off the floor on that side, doesn't right. mean they're going to be at the same height. Right. Because, <laughs> you know, walls, sure. they're never straight. So we get that exactly right. It makes a huge difference, or it makes at least a 10% difference. I tell people you can use the uh, null positioning ensemble, which is on the website, and you'll, you'll get within 90%, 85% of, of what it is. But when we're doing this, you know, these things are bolted to the floor. This is, this is it, you know. Um, and then the second day... And, and now we just do this faster and faster, usually toward the end of the first day, ideally. I at least run signal, and I get to see where we're at. So the subwoofers are placed in the right position, so I have to see what the subs are doing. I have to see what the speakers are doing. Then I figure out where the crossover is going to happen. Um, so that, and that's the real trick of this, the sorcery of this thing, is to find out what slope, what frequency response. And I have, I have templates of, of, this, of what the speakers are supposed to look like, what the... Uh, subwoofers are supposed to look like and and by adhering to that I can I can again I can be successful every time so the point being that you can have these things what, what you've just heard um, Warren you can hear this in a bedroom it won't sound like that walking around like in, in this room but right. you can have that same sweet spot in a bedroom that's the, that's amazing the miracle of it
every phantom focus system, every near field system is set up exactly the same all across the country. 67 and inches, 67 and a half inches from tweeter to tweeter. Yep. Um, so your triangle, the apex of your triangle is 18 inches out in front of the console and you're about six inches inside that triangle. You're six, six inches in front of the console. So you're inside it. And it's called a null positioning ensemble. It's on my website, you've seen yeah. it. Uh, we talked about it when I was out there. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, and 67 and a half isn't magic necessarily. It's just, you know, I just want to be consistent. So right. somebody could do 68 or they could do 69, but I wouldn't vary it too much because it works so well. I mean, then we do midfields and we do mains too, you know. But, um, <clears throat> so that's one thing that happens. These are phantom focus uh, stands made yep. by, um, you can go in there and take a look, or you can go in there with the camera and take a look. They're down at the bottom. You can see those plates they make for us, and then there's a, they're bolted to the floor, and then the stand sits on top of that on spikes, and then we have a clamp that clamps it down. So this is meant as a you know, permanent installation. So right. nobody's gonna mess with it um, when it's done. <clears throat> you know, nobody's going to reach over. You know that, I think I'll change the angle a little bit yeah. on this. <laughs> Not <laughs> enough, we've been here two days. One day is, we use four lasers and we set it up. It takes us a, just about a day to set up the, the physical part, the, what I call the rhythm track. Right. <clears throat> uh, and then another day for tuning. And, I want uh, to hear this. <clears throat> no, no way. <laughs> um, and then, well, let me, I'll finish this. So, sure. Let me tell you about these. These are the Phantom Focus monitors. These are the UH, the HD 1000s. Yep. There's also the UHD 1000s. So if you come over here, I can show you the drivers. These are really high-end drivers. The uh, drivers in these, the HD, these are Morel woofers, yep. five-inch woofer. This is a ScanSpeak tweeter, and they all have the same tweeter. And then this is the UHD. This is the one above it. Hold on to that. You can see the difference. Right. Um, and uh, the UHD is biamped, where these have a passive crossover. Okay. And then <clears throat> the newest thing, all the new cabinets have this. I worked this out with um, ISO Acoustics, that these actually flush into the bottom. Okay. So you have a, 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 a pistonic uh, decoupling device. So there's four on these. So those are built into the cabinet. Built in the cabinet. No one's ever done that before. Great. Uh, so <clears throat> what you're going to notice, we'll listen here in a second. It's the first thing you're going to notice is the imaging. Um, it's pinpoint. You'll notice that at 12 o'clock, you know, you can see 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 2.15, 2 2.45. Right. Th that's how, how articulate the imaging is. The speakers will also seem to disappear. And that even happens, you know, if you don't even have a phantom focus system, if you use a null positioning ensemble, the, the speakers just seem to disappear. Uh, next thing you'll notice is that when you go from source to source, it never sounds like the speakers, it sounds like the source, which is the idea. Um, so you'll be able to see the difference. I mean, every, it's amazing how, how, uh, what a difference you, you'll notice in the CDs, uh, or different, or track you play, Right. Uh, how different it sounds. So at some point, a vocal will sound like it's here, 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 and you can place it. Um, the other thing is, the low end is remarkable. You can you'd swear you could see the windings on the bass strings. <laughs> um, and without further ado, okay, you ready? Yep. You professionals. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. Everything is exactly there. Yeah, and I'll amazing. show you why. Now, you, when we did our other video, uh, I was able to show you this, but just as a refresher. Yeah. What's happening? Okay, this is a pair of uh, actually barefoots, and this will work on any speaker. <clears throat> it doesn't matter what speaker it is. Doesn't matter what room. They typically roll off at about 125 hertz because of the cancellation of the floor bounce. Yeah. <clears throat> so you'll always see this, and this this is the single reason, the only reason why people have such a hard time with the low end because they'll want to boost it. So they take out to the car, they got way too much, and they come down, and they'll say, that sounds great, I better turn the bass down. You know, and that's the way you have to live your life. Obviously the dip's here. So the only way you can fill that in, you can't really 
EQ it because you'd have to listen to 30 dB, just too much for the drivers typically. So you add a subwoofer, but that's got its own problems in the room. That's what the red line is. Or you could have that. And that's what you're listening to. So the subwoofer here, the red line, this is the phase up here, starting from the crossover on down. Uh, right there, you're looking at the left, the right, and the subwoofer. They're perfectly in phase. That's so great. that's why it sounds like 30 hertz is coming out of these little drivers. Yeah. And even if, the, even if this was a larger room, if, we had, if it was 10 feet away, it, it's never localized. It always sounds like it's coming from here. That's a trick. I mean, that's, that's where I have to roll up my sleeves to get that. Right. So. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, anything there you want to pick? Or... Uh, can, <clears throat> can I choose something? Absolutely. Can I find something online? So this is the, um, because of the odd, you know, because the staircase I had to deal with it. And I wanted to get them some kind of a booth. So this is sort of like the entrance of vestibule booth machine room. You know, right. made everything really quiet there. Uh, so this has got laminated glass, you know, double laminated glass. And this is all, you know, four inches of 703 all over here. So it's quite absorptive. And then in here, as I uh, said earlier, this was originally just, this whole thing was just an attic. And uh, take this shot over here. You'll, this is like the money shot here. If you look up there. We just pulled out the joist. It was like a nine foot ceiling and just revealed all this so we could take advantage of this crazy ceiling. I had to do quite a bit of work to make it symmetrical uh, so it wouldn't look stupid. This thing you see here, uh, that's just because that wasn't designed because some acoustic reason it was that's where the HVAC stuff had to go you know right, right. <clears throat> and then um, it's all this whole half of the room this is all four inches of 703 all the way over here and then everything else is live except for the the panelage that you see uh, the Orlex stuff again um, this is a I call them space couplers Orlex calls them something else but what it does especially if you have a small room it, this is this is as much aesthetic as it is anything else because it looks good, yeah. but the sound goes up, gets confused, comes back down, so it, it fools the microphone into thinking it's a bigger space than it is. That really wasn't the application here. But in this room, like if you hit the drums and you're out here, it's, it's almost like a booth because it's so absorptive there and it sounds amazing when you're at the drummer. Uh, and then if they want a liver sound, they can bring it out here. But the goal of all my rooms, any tracking room, is I go for neutral. You know, you don't want it too live, too dead. Right. This is a three-quarter inch laminated glass here. They didn't want anybody, any of the neighbors, anyone to hear it. So um, you've got a big um, uh, airspace there. Yep. And this thing weighed about 800 pounds. So we had to get a special forklift that cost us $1,800 just for one day to, wow. to bring it up. And you had six guys with white faces. I actually have a video of it <laughs> going in. David's so. going to play some drums and we're going to listen. Oh. Great low end projection of the kick there. Yeah, it was very, really nice. Very controlled out here. Yeah. Right so actually, those tunes, those drums were tuned by uh, Paul Lime, who's a top session. You probably know of him. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah so that's a great little mini drum alcove. Yeah. <laughs> and that's technical a, term. these doors. This is a double uh, vestibule that goes into the house. It's just a. Oh, okay. <clears throat> just to keep the sound from going out. So when he wants to come in here and jam, he's not going to uh, right. I mean, it, annoy some, the rest of his family. Some, you know, it's a house, so it's, there's yeah. some transmission with the low end, especially with the subwoofer system. This is a uh, 
uh, amp closet. There's a full panel in there. Uh, so that all comes up on the patch bay. And also, you can see up here, there are two PZMs up high. There's two PZMs here, and there's two PZMs here. All come up on the patch bay. Oh, great. So you take advantage of the room. Oh, fantastic. And are they hardwired? Yeah, they come right to the patch bay, yeah. Oh, okay, great. So you get all kinds, of, you could actually, and you can mix them up any way you want, you know come up with any kind of crazy thing you want. Right, fantastic. And get, get a mic and a, an amp down in the, the closet, you know. Right. Do they ever, like, Certainly. open the door and mic the, the stairwell? <clears throat> not that I know of, you know. I right. haven't been privy to everything they do, but it certainly is screaming to be tried. Again, these are, um, this is the Phantom Focus processor. <clears throat> this is actually, this is the one for the, uh, the UHD, for the dual system. So it's got two in and... Uh, as many as eight out so but this is the the HD so it's two in and three out <clears throat> uh, and one is for the subwoofer uh, where when it's by amp to you know use two more output channels these are the, the amps that uh, are built by ATI um, so there's just two channels here so <clears throat> in this case they're four ohm speakers so you're on 300 watts uh, a speaker the by amp there's four of these or the new, the new um, ATIs I'm using, there's, two, there's a D-Class and then there's also the Morris Kessler signature that they both come in racks uh, with modules so you can go up to seven channels for 5.1 mm -hmm. or whatever you want. Um, but uh, in the dual channel, you're talking uh, 500 watts. In, in the, uh, excuse me, in the bi-amp, it's 500 watts. So you get two for the woofers and two for each tweet, one for each tweeter, one channel for each tweeter, obviously. Um, so what's the total power of that system? The, po the one you're listening to yep. is, is 300 watts a channel. Okay. That doesn't call it, the subwoofers are uh, another uh, 750 watts. Uh, right, total or each? Each, yeah, 12 inch woofers, yeah. It's a lot of power. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> they, uh, actually these aren't the new ones. The new ones go down to 20, these go down to 30. And we're gonna put, the, as soon as I get the photograph, I'm still trying to put the, the new uh, e-commerce page together, the web page together. Uh, then the the new ones will go in here, and uh, NHT builds those for me. Great, yeah, absolutely fantastic. So, like I said, everything's third party except the, the monitors. Right, I have to do those myself. Unfortunately, <laughs> fortunately and unfortunately, uh, they were being made in Palo Alto, yeah. And uh, I just moved the whole operation here, found the CNC factory, and um, so everything's done in Nashville now. Yeah, that's great. And, and the the guy who paints them paints Ferraris and Lamborghinis, you know, so he's, <laughs> seemed, but you would think that'd be an easy thing to get some, the painting was the hard, hardest thing. Harder than, really? Harder than making the, the cabinets, having the cabinets made. I got to go to Focal and watch their whole process of painting and you're right, it's insane. Yeah, oh the painting, you saw yeah. that? It's, 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 yeah. Well, I, tons of people <laughs> walking around with huge breathing apparatus on. Just oh like, that's the other thing, you yeah. know, it's just like, it can't be toxic, Yeah. you know. Yeah. It's happened to me. I've gotten some cabinets and like I can't even hold, you know, they don't understand, you know. Yeah, yeah. So there's only certain, these, this is automotive paint. Right. You know, and yep. you can't put a clear coat on it because that reeks. It, it's a very tricky way to do it now that I know that. Carl, thank you so much. My pleasure as always, Warren. Thank I don't you, know how you do it. I got to hand it to you. Uh, lots of flying, uh, lots of not sleeping very much but also lots of fun i mean you know yeah i'm no, blessed to be able to do no, this. no i'm glad we've talked about this for a couple of years and i'm just thrilled to have you here and finally have this opportunity marvelous so. yeah the last couple of times i've been in nashville i've never been able to make it happen so i'm yeah. glad we did yeah absolutely so of course there'll be tons of links uh to everything that carl does from chairs to phantom focus to you name it all of those links will be below and of course leave a whole bunch of comments and questions and have a marvelous time recording mixing and mastering